we're just going to have fun. I'm going to ask you some questions, and uh, if you can't remember it, we'll go back to it. And uh, don't worry about it. So first of all, tell me about um, tell me about your mom and dad. Your mom and dad. Tell me their both their names. Um, my mother's name was Bessie Fox Stupson. My father's name was Winfield Henry Hoffman. And of course, when my mother married, her name became Bessie Fox Stupson Hoffman. And uh, uh, she was 18, and my father was a couple years older, around 20. And they had, her family consisted of three children. You want me to go on? Yeah, yeah. And uh, my, um, Walter, my brother Walter was the oldest. He's since passed away. I'm the girl in the middle, and I'm still here. And then I have a younger brother, Clifford, 10 years younger than I. And uh, uh, the families, my brother uh, uh, married Ethel Dickinson and had uh, Joan, Joan Hoffman. Joan married uh, Kevin, uh, Oh, that's okay. You don't have to tell me that. Tell me about where, uh, where did your dad come from originally? Where? My father originally came, and the Hoffmans come from Lehigh County. That's uh, around Emmaus and uh, Albertus toward Allentown. Uh, my grandmother's name, my grandmother's name was um, Emma Gaiman, and she was raised on a farm around Hoos Church. I have a picture of it, but I have never seen the farm, but I think we could find it. Now she had, um, she had four brothers, and uh, yeah, four brothers, and she was the only girl. Uh, these brothers were great big tall men. They started at like six, three, four, six, two, three, and four. and. Um, I don't know their names except Valentine. I think he was the youngest. And Grandma was just a little woman, five feet. She said the reason she didn't grow was because she had to lug all her brothers around all her life, these big men, you know. And uh, then uh, my uh, Henry Hoffman, my grandfather, I, I never saw him. He died before my time. Now they lived uh, in, right out of Albertus. Did Henry Hoffman come from Europe, or was he was he? No, first, he was here. He was first generation. And so was Emma Gaiman here. They were all German origin. Yes. Yeah, they had been here a long time, mm -hmm. and uh, they were Mennonites. And of course, Henry and uh, Emma had, uh, let me see, five children. Uh, Morris, the oldest, Walter next, and uh, Francis next, and then there was uh, a, uh, what the hell? I can't think of his name now, That's okay. and then Stella, uh -huh. my father, and then Stella. Uh -huh. And uh, those, um, those men all married and had families. Uh, uncle, I'll call them, they were my uncles. Mm -hmm. So, and, so Henry, Henry was second generation here, your father? That we're talking about now? Yeah, I mean, yeah. he was second generation in America. Oh, no, no, they, they, they came over, well, I guess it could be, maybe second, third generation. Your grandfather was probably the first generation here? Probably, he probably. probably. Now, and and from, from where in Germany? Do you, do you know? I don't know, my grandmother used to talk about um, Austria-Hungary when it was a co country together, and uh, Austria, I don't know, Hungary. Now they, of course, since they've become separate countries, and uh, uh, I, I think that's about where we came from, because every generation carried a very dark man, which would be, uh, what, what was the country next to Austria, where the gypsies were? Well, anyway, I think some came from there, and uh, that's where the love of the horse came. They were great horsemen, and they, she talked about coming from there. 
and uh, uh, probably he too, uh, uh, probably Henry also. But they met here in this country. And then uh, while their family was growing up, uh, Henry, her husband, Henry Hoffman, worked in the mines, the iron mines, the iron mines around uh, Albertus and Emmaus. And the donkeys that pulled the, the ore cars, one of the donkeys kicked my grandfather in the face here and he eventually died young from, from the blow. Mm. And then grandmother, I guess the church helped her and she raised her children. And uh, the only thing I remember was for forever she lived with Francis at Leventh and Oli, where you and then we always used to meet there and uh, Saturday night. And that, that was all strictly Mennonite then. And when my father was young, of course, they spent all Sunday in church and he got so tired of it. When he was little, he'd say, I don't believe it, I don't believe it. As soon as I'm big enough, I'm going to move to Reading. Well, he went at 17, and he didn't believe it. So, of course, our family was doomed. We left the Mennonites, and we were lost souls. But then the Mennonites became much more tolerant, and then their church was at Tenth and Ole. And uh, there's where all the, um, my cousins went to church there and they had, they all played instruments. And Naomi uh, had, uh, that was Francis's children, had, uh, they were all talented. They could sing, they could play, they, in the radio in the early days, Naomi was an excellent pianist. And Saturday night, we'd meet there and Uncle Francis would buy the ice cream. And we all sang hymns, and I, I think I know every hymn there is. And I enjoyed it, and I, I thought that was the only kind of music there were, there was, excepting Naomi got the Etude, E-T-U-D-E, -E, that was a, a very good musical magazine. And then she could play all the songs in there. And of course she didn't, I, I don't know, I believe she sang, I believe she played hymns on the, t on the radio, not TV. Well, uh, each family, I'll go to Uncle Walter, he had Helen. He first, he married a woman the name of Bessie Smith, and she died young and died in childbirth with Helen Hoffman. And of course, Helen had a, quite a rocky life. Uh, she, every time she was- about, I'm gonna interrupt you before we get into that. I'm gonna have you do some of that. I, I want you to answer me some other questions. Um, um, you were talking about I wanted to ask another question about um, about your mom. We, we, I, I asked about your dad. Yeah, when I see mother's another side, and you have the full history. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, talk to me about uh, talk to me about uh, about your mom. What was her maiden name again? It was. It was she was Bessie Fox Dubson. Dubson. D U B S O N. Tell me about uh, what do you know about her? Where 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 was her lineage from? Back. In she Europe? was born in a log cabin in Blandon. And uh, then grandfather had a farm uh, that's buried beneath the dam at um, uh, Analone. Mm -hmm. And when the, after it was built, you could still see the, the stone wall up at the dam breast, the stone wall to the barnyard, and uh, the creek, the Mud Creek, Maiden Creek flowed mm -hmm. right by there. The now he wasn't very out. successful. When she was 12 years old, they moved to Reading on North 6th Street. and. Uh, uh, I, the only work I knew, I guess grandfather worked somewhere else. And then he worked for years as a watchman at Carsonia Park. Right. And he was on duty all the time. And when I'd go down there, I'd get on all the things for nothing. <laughs> and uh, of course they had five children. Now the, Dub the, the Dubsons, the Dubsons were from where? What, what, what country was that, do you know? Way back, the name was Dubon. I think that's in that, isn't it? And they came from France originally, but uh, my mother always said we were Irish. And at the other big farm where her grandmother and grandfather Miller lived, you have the painting. You have the. Uh, they were from. They were from Germany, and uh, yeah, and Ireland. Germany so, and Ireland. So tell me, uh, you, you're going to admit this, but hopefully you're going to admit it. So, so what year was, was Iona born? What year were you born? 1908. 1908. Yep, just over the turn of the century. And I'm. So, 
And what year was Walter born? What? What year was Walter born? Walter. Um, he was seven. Six. No, four. He was. He was seven. born in in five. Nineteen four. Yeah. Nineteen four. Nineteen four. He was born in four, and you were born in, in eight. eight. You're four years apart. And what, yeah. and what year was Clifford born? 1918. 1918. The, the armistice was just signed from Second World War, and he was born then the, the 11th, and he was born the um, what 9th of December. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, where we, uh, where in Reading did you grow up as a little girl? Uh, uh, Windsor Street in Reading. 1030 at Windsor. I was born there and there till I was 10, 12 years old. And uh, what, what what was your what, obviously your your mother was taking care of the household of the three of you. What was your what was your dad doing? My dad worked uh, well when he was seventeen. He came, went to Reading and went to the car shops, and then he got into the painting uh, in the Reading Company. And then uh, by the time we were on Green Street, he was head of all the painting for the Reading Company. Now, when you say the Reading Company, you're talking about the, the, railroad. the railroads. Yeah, the railroad. Yeah, the old PNR. So they were painting the locomotives uh, and the. Uh, no. Speaking of one, it no, sounds like one's coming by right now. What is that? Is that a train? Yes. Oh, the freight trains are back there. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of the on cue. On cue, good. <laughs> the right Those are probably three diesels. Yeah. It's a heavy That's hill. Okay. So, what, what were we saying there? Well, we were talking about he painted for the Reading Company. Oh, he painted all the stations, all the signs, and all that kind of work. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they were busy. He, he he was head of them. He had a crew of about, oh yeah, there you can see it, a crew of, a, oh, I don't know, maybe 15 painters. Uh -huh. And then he, um, uh, he, they had a work car and they would go on the side divisions like down at Perky Omen and they'd pull this work car in there and they'd stay for three, four days and the men couldn't come home. And then finally my father asked for a big motor car that was driven by motor, not one of these. And he got that and uh, he had his gang foreman with him and he was down near Norristown and he was showing a, a, a what would it be, I guess, a switch, something they wanted painted. And they were both looking up, and my father was explaining it. It was the day, Lynn, May the 20th, 1927, the day Lindbergh flew across. And uh, he looked up at, and uh, he ran into a closed switch. And uh, he was thrown from the car, and he just fell the distance from sitting to the tracks, but he hit the back of his head on the rail, and he became unconscious. They took him into the Narstown Hospital, called my brother, and she was too late to see him. He died. How, internal hemorrhage. How old were you when that happened? Uh, 17. 17? He was 47 when he was born. I was uh, finishing my post-grad work at high school. And we had been up the year before, my father and I had made arrangements at Lebanon Valley College. I was going to go there, but then I didn't go. Tell me about growing up as a little girl. What was it, uh, in the early 1900s, it was the turn of the yeah. century, were there a lot of car, what, what was going on? No. Uh, no, on Windsor Street, there was a St. Thomas's Church at Leventh and Windsor, and people were of a mind to go to church in those days. Down at 9th Street was about two thirds of Noldy's factory built, stocking factory. Now, Mr. Noldy lived right at the corner in sort of a little mansion at Leventh and Windsor. Now his children were all older than I, but they were Walter's age, and they played together, and they were nice children. And Mr. Naldi, being a very wealthy man, came from Germany along with the Germans from Wyomissing, and he built up this factory. Every day he went to work, I'd see him go to work, and he just had a chambray shirt on and average pants, and that was great. He went to work with his working people. He hired women that were uh, bidders, gave them preference. He had a big thing going there. And then later on, he, they tore down the school at 9th and Windsor and extended the factory, the one full block and a half block long. I don't know what, three, four stories, I think that is where the outlet is now. What do you remember being a little girl though when you were growing up? What well, do you remember doing? What were the fun I, things to do? First of all, we had kerosene lights. And I think they paid $12 a month rent for 1038 Windsor Street, nice house. I thought it was great. And uh, the corner, I went to the butcher shop every day for my mother down at the corner because 
all you had was a little ice, a little box with ice in. And uh, so I ran there. Then, then she'd send me up to the 11th Street store and I'd buy groceries. And she said, when I was little, she wanted me to get, I forget, like a loaf of bread, a pound of butter or whatever it was. And she said, I went up the street saying a loaf of bread, a pound of butter, a loaf of bread, a pound of butter. And the kids wanted to talk to me. And I said, don't talk to me, don't talk to me, a loaf of bread and a pound of butter. And she said, I went all the way up the street saying it. But I'd come home with the things. How much was a loaf of, pen, uh, a loaf of bread and a pound I of butter? I think then? maybe five, eight cents. For a loaf of bread? Yeah. And milk, the milkman came around and he dipped the milk out. He dipped it out? Yeah. It wasn't in the bottle? Or no, anything. you came with your pitcher and he dipped it out of a big can. Where and he came early because so it wouldn't turn sour. Where did you put the stuff then to keep it cold? Well, then we had a little ice box with just ice. Mm -hmm. And then she'd uh, put the... When did the ice man come around and sell you a block of ice? Every day. Every day? They came every day and they brought it in and put it in the refrigerator for you. How much did that cost, do you remember? I think 12 cents for a great big cake. <laughs> 12 cents. And sometimes uh, he'd work at that, you only had to get it every other day. But then there was a drip pan underneath and you had to remember to empty that or your whole kitchen would get flooded. Let me see what else. Uh, and uh, we played, um, it was brick payments. And a couple, couple of the neighbors had cement. And then I got a pair of roller skates, not shoe ones. You just slipped them on the bottom, and then we skated on there. And I thought that was great. And then I must have been pretty small. And I drew a hopscotch out on the front brick pavement. And it was Sunday morning, everybody going to church. And in those days, children were seen, uh, seen but not heard. And there I was, hopping away. My father came out and got me by the scruff of the neck, and in I went, you know. Everybody was going around my hopscotch, and that, well, you didn't allow children to do that in those days. And then I remember we kept the kerosene lamp on at night because I didn't want to sleep. It was dark. And then in the back room, uh, my father got a bathtub that was slightly damaged from the railroad and they put the bathtub in the back bedroom and then we had a bath. But we had the outside bathroom. Oh, was, I, I never knew any differently. Then suddenly the gas came. They put the gas main in and there was a big red, uh, what should I say, iron thing where the gas came in and you dropped your quarters in there. And my mother always had a couple quarters lying there because the lights would start dipping and then it was time to run down the basement, put another quarter in. And that's how you paid your gas bill. Is that how you paid your gas bill? I didn't know that. Yeah. And then uh, my, my mother had a wash machine that you turned by hand. Uh -huh. And my father was, had his office. Uh, just before he went over the swinging bridge, uh, does he know anything about that? He went in the 8th Street entrance at the, beside the old ironworks. And yeah, then there were the offices, my father and the carpenter boss. And then you went over the swinging bridge down to the outer station. And uh, my father would come home at noon to eat. And then he'd have to turn this wash machine 15 minutes and he'd do it at noon and then, and then the wash got real clean. Then later you got it that you'd put it on the water, your spigot. And it was called a, a water washer, I guess. And then it, it, it ran by itself then. That was great. <laughs> And then you hung all this wash out back, and if you were a good housekeeper, you had your wash out there at least by 9 o'clock, all hanging out. Snow White, bleh. everybody vied, vied to have the... And our, I guess maybe he earned, well, I know when he was young, he earned $25 a month. So... Yeah. $25 a month. A month. A month. A month. And then uh, he, as he got the, the better job, his, you know, the money increased. And, uh, and for $25 a month, he was supporting a family of, of three? No, no. Then then he was only considering marriage and things. Uh oh, this is but, but he married at that low rate. But then uh, my mother was um, worked in this, in this stocking mill. There was a mill at 11th and Greenwich. And... Um, my father's sister worked there too, and they were they were 16 years old. And then uh, uh, Catty Corner to Cross was is the fire company. It's still there, 
at Levinth and Greenwich. And uh, then I don't know where my father came from, but they'd flirt with the girls and they'd lean out the window at noontime, and that's when my mother met my father. And, Is that uh, how they met? Uh, at the, the mail and through his sister. And uh, that, that was great. They earned quite a bit of money then, they thought so. What, um, what can you remember about, uh, about my grandfather, about Walter? I understand he was he was a couple of years older than you. Yeah, he he was. But I would almost, assume you were close. You were you were a little bit closer than certainly Clifford was oh, yeah. as far as age wise. Yeah. See. What uh, what what do you remember about Walter when he was growing up? Well, the four years difference made a big difference, and uh, uh, the the boy of the family was all oh, the son of the family was tops. But I was my father's girl, so I never felt I was you know, missing anything. But he, he was always, he always had work. And he, he of course, he was, he was quite a brilliant man. And uh, he thought I, I was just a nuisance to him. And <laughs> it didn't get on my way, you know. And he went his own path very well, but he was always working, always had jobs. And I remember one day my mother said, I you keep your bicycle in. He must have been about, we lived on Green Street then, maybe, 15, and uh, he went out with his bicycle and they'd oil the streets in those days to keep the dust on. And he went down Green Street and he looked back at her when he did, these wheels went on on him and he rolled in the oil. And he was, well, she had to destroy the clothing and everything. boy, he really got it. <laughs> and one other time I remember we were eating and when we were little, you gave your pennies at church to the Armenians. They were starving then. and. Uh, uh, Walter hated bread crust, and he'd stick it under his plate. And my father got after us and said, now the Armenians would be glad for that bread. My brother said, well, give it to them, and boy, you got a whack. <laughs> he said, give it to them. <laughs> he didn't say that then. <laughs> but our family, my mother and father, it was a very loving family. My mother and father were deeply in love with each other to his dying day, and he, she belonged to the door in the to say goodbye when he went to work. There was a glass in the door. And then she'd stand in front of there and he'd hug her and kiss her. She said, Winfield, the neighbors, but she'd still stand there. You know, in those days you didn't show any, any love in front of anyone. But I recall a very happy childhood because they were so in love. And, it, and uh, my father made an excellent father and husband. When did you about your summers? What? Your summers when you went camping. Oh, that yeah, then when I was eight years old, uh, her oldest brother, my Uncle I Isaac, had a, and Uncle Charlie, uh, her, her youngest brother too, had big tents up along the Maiden Creek. And they'd stay all summer, and my father would walk across the fields to Calcium and come in on the train. Uh, that wasn't, wasn't far from Reading and then he'd come home in the evening. And boy, with Aunt Sarah's children and, and uh, Walter and I, we just ran wild. And I learned to swim when I was nine years old in the big, big uh, water hole there. The Maiden Creek was beautiful. We had a great big walled out spring that the Indians used. And then Uncle Ike used to come up and hunt arrowheads. And you could just pick them out of the fields. Beautiful things. He, has, he had an excellent collection. It's down at Valley Forge. He gave it there after he died, uh, before he died. Where did you go to school when you were growing up? Well, see, and then I went right there to uh, 10th and Douglas and 9th and Windsor. See, I only had to walk two blocks. Um, what was the high school then at the time? The old girls' high school at 4th and Court. And, and you graduated from there in? Uh, 26 Feb in the middle of the year and then I did a year post-grad work because I had taken commercial it had just been a new uh, curriculum and uh, I didn't have enough to enter uh, Lebanon Valley so I did a year of post-grad work then that May my father was killed then um, and then where were you going to college Levin Lebanon Valley Lebanon at Valley. Anvil and then instead I went to Kutztown and what year did you go to Kutztown then, probably? I graduated in 29. See, I did a year of post-grad and then two years at Kutztown. And the first year I commuted on the train, I got a pass. And uh, the second year I lived up. The tuition was $34.50 a term. 
<laughs> and the train used to go into Kutztown. Well, you had to change at Topton, and you got the, the <laughs> dinky over to Kutztown. The booming metropolis of Topton, and then you went from Topton, you got another another train another, from Topton uh, to Kutztown. That's right. I was on the main train, though, you know, going up to Topton. And where did you pick the train up from Reading? At the Otter Station. Ah. <laughs> um, how many buildings were at Kutztown when you were there? Was it just like Old Main? Was old, I assume Old Main was there. That was the original building, yes? Yeah, that and then uh, the older part down at the end where the pillars are. Mm -hmm. And uh, the library. Uh, that, that was all. And, and then in my time, I had to work to get my degree. It took eight years then, going back summers. And, and uh, then they built Sheridan's, the art building, and they built uh, the big one across the, beside the library. What's that big, oh. Well, there's so many, not uh, Schaefer Auditorium. Yeah, well, that's where you have the, uh, the group things. It's, a, it's an auditorium. And uh, let me see what else, that's, that's all. What, uh, why'd you want to become a teacher? Well, what I really wanted, I wanted to be a hostess on an airplane. And uh, I went to find out what you had to do, and, and in those days you had to have three years of nursing, and I couldn't do that. Three I, years of nursing yep. to be on an airplane? Yeah, and see, I was small, and I weighed about 90 pounds. I, I was good material. At that time, they didn't want tall women or uh, and uh, because of stooping and, you know, the first planes were pretty rugged. And I, I, I could never take nursing. I, and now, now, you don't even, you can get through without being a high school graduate if you go about nine months to the uh, aviation school in, out in Kansas, I guess there's a big one. Yeah, I wanted that. That's what you wanted to do. Why did you, you want to do that? You wanted to travel? I, I liked the traveling and I liked people and I wanted to uh, get around a little. I, I, just the airplanes thrilled me. I just thought that was great. The last thing I want to do before I die is go over on that uh, big plane. What is it? The, the Concorde? The Concorde, yeah. It holds 250 people. Jack could take me down, wait for me. I'll go over and have lunch, and then I'll come back right away. Yeah, he'd, be about, he'd, he'd, he'd be just about done with <laughs> lunch by then, yeah, too. Yeah, that's what I figure. Yeah, well, let's only, let me see. I found out the other day, it's only about $6,000 one way. Is it that much? $6,000 one way. Well, that isn't going to happen. <laughs> $12,000. Could I come home on a, on a, what? Uh, a Cessna? <laughs> Rowboat. <laughs> Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I still want to go. Well, what, I was uh, on the QE2, so that made me happy across the ocean. Do you think, uh, do you think there was any reason you like, well, you like travel, and then, of course, of course, Walter was really into airplanes, too. Uh, well, yeah, he liked airplanes. Well, well, why is that, I wonder? Because it was new at that time? It was brand new, brand new. Brand new. Well, your grandfather and grandmother on their wedding trip had a, out at, uh, what was the name of the air, airport? They had chartered a plane Spats. to, uh, where were they Spats going? To, to where? Spats. Spats. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, what happened? It, it crashed. Yeah, it sort of, yeah. Falls. And uh, that was brand new. That was real new. And, and that was really the future. I mean, you could see that planes were going to take over. Sort of like what space travel is today. Yeah, I, I, if, I, if I could go to the moon, I would. I'd like to look back at the Earth. I think that'd be great. <laughs> I got to change the tape. <laughs>